ultimately, both Kravit and Century are going to be finalizing their work. Century's going to get that fabric from Kravit. They're going to fabricate the sofa as per our request. They're going to ship that off over to the Carter's uh, Brigantine Beach home. Soon after that, I imagine we're going to be getting the bills from both of the vendors. So let's record our vendor invoices under accounting back to our familiar bills and invoices. That gets us to our vendor deposit invoicing operating expense window. And just like our deposit, we go back to our ad. And rather than using a type of deposit on purchase order, we're going to go to invoice on project purchase order. And if we enter in, let's do Kravitz first, we can see Design Manager again really populates most of the information for us. We have Kravit as our vendor, the invoice number. If provided, we can enter it in here. If Kravit did not uh, provide one, we could simply put in the purchase order number, or today's date, or any uniquely identifying characters is just fine. Let's say they gave us one, pop that in. Invoice date, today's date is just fine. Transaction description, again, optional, but highly recommended. Final bill for fabric trim. And now we want to use our purchase order component grids to ensure that the information we're recording into Design Manager matches the bill in our hand precisely. For example, let's say that the bill from Kravit isn't 1590, but it's an even 1600, and that the fabric came in a little higher. Well, we can simply make those changes by highlighting the fabric clicking the edit button as indicated by the pencil and changing our merchandise cost from 1190 to 1200. Click OK and we can see that our cost on invoice increases to 1200 and both our subtotal and amount due now equals 1600. And as that matches the bill in our hand from Kravit precisely, we're ready to proceed. Since we have another bill to enter, we're going to use our OK Add button. This will not only save our invoice from Kravit, but it'll also keep our vendor invoice window up for more entry. And there we go. Now we can put in our purchase order for Century. And let's say Century, they didn't give us an invoice number. We'll use the purchase order number. Today's date is fine for our invoice date, transaction description, final bill for sofa frame. In the case of Century, let's imagine that the frame was indeed 1800 but they also charge us a $200 shipping charge. Well, we can put that in as well. Back to our edit button. We'll leave them, uh, the cost of the frame at 1800 but we'll put in $200 of freight. If we click OK, our cost on invoice increases to 2000 as does our subtotal. Notice here, Design Manager is automatically recognizing that we did indeed send that $900 on our American Express over to Century and is inputting that and automatically updating the amount due to $1,100. And since that matches the bill from uh, Century precisely, we can click OK and now we'll see both of our entries for our vendor invoices for Kravit and Century. From here, we can print a journal and go ahead, post, and they'll drop from our new tab and be displayed in our existing tab. Notice I didn't select to use American Express on both of my uh, vendor invoices, so those entries are waiting for us on our payments and checks window to indicate payment. And we can see, here is our bill for Century and Kravit. Let's go ahead and generate checks for them both. To do so, select them and hit the checks button in the bottom right corner. That brings us to our check run window. If I had multiple checking accounts, I could select it off my checking account menu. I have but one. And when I select it, Design Manager is going to generate the checks for us, 10,008 for Century and 10,009 for Kravit. I can also print a journal here for my records. I can click print and post. 
On the print check window, I want to select the desired printer, of course, and actually put my physical check forms into that printer. Now, Design Manager gets all of its check forms from Nelco, and I have selected a particular format that we can see in the print preview window, which we call our center format, in that it has the check itself in the center of the document and a stub at the top and at the bottom as well. And there's also forms you could buy from um, Nelco for uh, bottom check, which would be a stub at the top, stub in the middle, check at the bottom, or lastly, top, which would be check at the top, stub in the middle, stub at the bottom. So whatever your current a desired format is Nelco can meet them. So here we go. We have our check for 1100 for Century, our check for 1600 for Kravit. From here, I would physically click the print button. So Design Manager sends the checks off to the printer itself, and it actually prints on those documents. Once the printing is complete and to my satisfaction, just like our other print preview windows, we want to close and accept. Now, those entries drop off our, pay print, tab, our pay print tab and can be seen on the checkbook tab in our register itself. And here's our check 10,008 for Century, 10,009 for Kravit, reducing our balance as expected. And that really finishes a lot of our dealings with the vendors themselves. And if we look back on our project tab, we can see the specifications that our custom sofa has progressed all the way to needs to be invoiced. 